i think we can start with the introduction now just we shall wait for one more minute um, okay sure. Uh, santosh we are good to go i think okay cool so good evening everyone uh, to all the pgp ones uh, i hope you have a great weekend so without further ado it is my pleasure to introduce you to the founder of havisham consulting mr havish uh, he is also the co-founder of decode research and analytics he is a mba gold medalist scholarship awardee and an also an author of 20 books he has conducted several analytics sessions um across different iims and iits he also conducted a session uh, in, at iim kolkata in march 2021 which helped a lot for P current pgp2s in their during their course of internship uh, he has been awarded indian achievers award for young entrepreneur by indian achievers forum in 2021 he has been uh been 40 under 40 innovators by analytics insight 2019 and he also been awarded 20, 30 innovative startups to watch in 2019 by ceo magazine uh with this brief introduction i now request mr havish to begin the session thank you thank you so much for the introduction uh you know so while my profile might seem very long and it might seem that i've done a lot of things which i have i think the one thing that defines me is my absolute love for excel so i fell in love with excel as a school student this is way back in the, about 2000 so i mean i did my schooling in 2004 and uh, since 2000 i have non stop been working on excel and um, i live and breathe it of course over the years after becoming a consultant and starting my own firm zigzagging between a lot of career options um i did manage to acquire new skills and uh, now i have a lot of different interest areas so now i'm a polyglot so i'm a full fledged programmer i work on javascript i do data science and r in python but if you wake me up in the middle of the night and you say what do you really love to work on excel is that one true love that i have right so in addition to the background that was given i'll quickly share um, a little more with you so that all of you have a sense of what type of clients i work with and whatever projects i work on uh, my website is habishan consulting you all can go and have a look at that um so the work that we do is predominantly in excel and power bi so i would say about 70 to 80% of our work is on excel and power bi and the balance 20% is split between uh, multiple other platforms and languages and technologies so there is some work that i do on tableau then i also work on r and python not a lot of high end work but some basic data science work and uh, i have recently also picked up javascript uh, which i will also be introducing today because you can use javascript in excel now right in terms of client projects i have worked with um, a very wide assortment of firms so i worked with the big fours i worked with some investment banking firms uh, pwc ey dshow deloitte they're all clients of mine i've conducted hundreds of trainings for them so about one third of my year i'm spending with the big fours and the big threes consulting and training them in addition to that i have clients from various sectors so there is no pattern here i work with media companies bfsi clients some fintech companies healthcare sector right uh, my work has been featured in a lot of media outlets so prior to starting habishan consulting which is a pure analytics firm I was running a private limited called as a director called Decode Research and Analytics, and um, we used to do a lot of work with Business World magazine, with Economic Times, and um, primarily with Business World and Impact, and that is where a lot of our work got featured. So I've been featured, and my surveys and research work has been featured in a number of different magazines. Um, obviously, the business is a combination of corporate training and corporate consulting. Business schools. is about 10 to 15% of my top line right now but it occupies about 25% of my time and the reason i spend so much of my time with b school students like you over a variety of different engagements is because that is something i'm passionate about i have been an educator i was pursuing my phd for 4 years before i dropped out i have 
taught at a few universities full time so this is something that i really like and i absolutely love to do and that's why i spend an inordinate amount of time on my b school engagements in terms of college engagements i have um, done engagements with most of the top 50 75 b schools in some form or the other so whether as a guest lecture a pre internship pre placement session a paid workshop a certificate course i also partner for a lot of competitions and i judge a lot of competitions as well right if you're curious about it you can go and have a look at the website right what is um, something that will help you immediately to go to free downloads and here you can find a b school competition archive all of you know that appearing for competition is super important and what i have done here is that i've collected about 6 to 7 competitions and it's not 6 to 7 presentations so from each competition there are some 10 15 top submissions and all of that has been put together in a single zip folder so this is a great opportunity for all of you to set a baseline you know to see the quality that other b school students and your seniors are are doing and what quality they are matching so that that can be a target for you that i also have to learn and acquire these skills right so that's something i would really encourage you to go and have a look at right um i also offer courses in different areas so these are online courses and um, i'm very proud of the fact that from the top 150 b schools in the country i have students from each and every single b school and how do i know that because i track it as a matter of fact in 2019 we had done the b school ranking for business world magazine as well right so the courses i offer are on excel google sheets powerpoint everything related to power bi tableau basic programming on python r and i right um you can get a sense here and finally before we start you can also visit my youtube channel where i have over 600 videos which are ranging um, over a wide area of top you know of coverage so it has videos ranging from 60 second tips to 12 hour long lectures uh, primarily on excel but it also includes a little bit of tableau vba power bi and so on and so forth right so it would be great if you want to go and have a look at this right there's a lot of content so you will have to spend some time to identify what is it that is relevant to you because uh, where to start is super important you can't randomly pick up any video and watch but i'm sure you will find something of value there all right now back to the topic at hand we are uh, looking at excel today now i know we are calling it the basics of excel but i'm going to change this a little bit i'll not call it the basics of excel i will say that basics of everything related to excel right why am i making the small change because when i say basics of excel people think of simple topics like how to create a project how to create a model how to build a chart or a pivot table right that's not what i want to do i want to talk about everything that is a part of excel right so if i look at the components of excel we have formulas and functions which is something all of you have some level of familiarity with um so everything from a sum to an average to a count to a sum if to a pivot table i'm including everything in this bucket formulas and functions the second part of excel is vba which is visual basic for applications that is a programming language so let me just write visual basic for applications the third component that we have is something called power query that uses a language called m and then we have power pivot that uses a language called dax m stands for m it doesn't really stand for anything but dax stands for data analysis expressions right so there are three languages that i have already introduced to you vba m and dax and then finally we also have typescript that is used for something called the script editor and finally we have javascript which i'm sure all of you have heard of which we used to create web apps there is another component called power fx we see if we have time to speak about it but i will probably spend at least one minute talking about this as well now let's quickly go over them one by one so i want to start with formulas and functions right and how i want to do this is that i will do it on an excel file which i can also send to you later right 
So all of you can go back and practice in case you want to. Okay, quickly tell me what is the answer to this question? Okay. Just give me a moment. Okay. So everyone, tell me the answer to this question. If I write one, two, and three, and I want to multiply this by some number, let's say 10%. Right. What is the mistake with the way I've written the formula? Anyone? Anybody? Quickly, what do you think is the mistake that I made here? Okay, so Indran, you're saying that I have to fix it. That means that you want me to put a dollar sign. But the dollar is not really the problem. There's some other problem. Can somebody spot what the problem is? That we okay. are trying to multiply what with what? Okay, so brackets and dollar signs and all of that. But I would say the problem, everybody, is that exactly. How can I multiply an array of three values with a single value? Does it make sense? It's not about the parentheses or anything. We cannot multiply a range with a number, right? But you're wrong. You can. Watch this. If I multiply I3 colon I5 by J2 without putting a dollar sign, Excel is now smart enough to know that, oh, Havish is trying to multiply three values with one value. And it doesn't really make sense. How can you do that? But it is taking the decision to still give me the result. Did you see this? I have only written one formula, but it is spilling the results into three different cells. How cool is that? So if you look at the second and third cell, there is no formula in these cells that I've written, but it's still able to do that, right? Let me just show you a bigger example. Now, if I have the previous year's sales for different customer representative, and I want to create a target for next year, usually what will we do? We will write equal to C5, and then we put a dollar on C, multiplied by one plus D dollar four, right? Some of you might not have worked on dollar signs earlier. Dollar signs just allow me to fix the row and the column. So we say that each value in column C, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, has to be multiplied by each column, which is 4, 5, 6, uh, D, E, F, and G. But then after putting the dollar, you have to copy and paste. But we don't really need to do that because now I can work like this. I can say C5, colon C12, multiplied by one plus D4 colon G4. How cool is that? No dollar sign is required. No need to write one formula and then have to copy and paste it. Enter and you get the result. Right? This topic that I'm teaching you is called dynamic arrays. See, if all of you want to note down these things, you can, even though I'll be sharing this uh, note with you after the session is over, right? But if you still want to note it down, I'm okay with that. So this is called dynamic arrays, but this is only available for Microsoft 365. Keep this in mind. It is not available in Office 2007, 10, 13, 16, or even 19. Office 2021 that will soon be introduced will have this feature, but uh, all the other versions of Excel do not have this feature. Right? Any question on this, anybody? Yeah, I'll just wait for 60 seconds in case somebody has a question. Uh, Ashika, does it work if we start in any cell? We have to start in the first cell, right? Because um, it can only spill below and to the right. It cannot spill above and to the left. For example, if I say like this, it will only spill below and to the right, right? not above and to the left. So Akash, uh, Google Sheets is very different. Um, can I give you an example? Let me open Google Sheets first. Let's, let's take some values first, right? I'm just taking some random numbers between 100 and 200, right? 
if I'm working on Google Sheet, what we do is, um, if I have the same set of numbers with me on Excel and on Google Sheets, on Excel, we can write equal to M3 colon M12 multiplied by N3 colon N12. How cool is that? What will it do? It will multiply three by three, four by four. So each corresponding value, right? Like this. So one formula gives me all the results, correct? But if I try to do the same thing on Google Sheets, if I say this multiplied by this, it doesn't really work, right? It is giving me some autofill and all, but it's still popping the formula down, which is not really what we wanted. So how do you do this on Google Sheets? We will have to say array formula and inside the array formula, we can write multiplied by C. So we multiply by C and you will get the same result using a single formula. The approach is quite different. Even though at the back end they are very similar because you're still working with the concept of an array. And Google works on something called App Script, which is JavaScript. Excel also does the same thing, but the way it works, the syntax and the semantics are different. Excel in Windows and the Mac. Yeah, so they're getting at par now. Um, but if you're working on the perpetual license, there will be some differences between Excel and the Mac. But over time, it has become better. But if you want the full featured set of, you know, all the options that you get on Excel, then you have to work on Windows. But see, if you're working on the cloud, it doesn't really matter, right? If you're using Excel online, then whether you're working on a Mac or Windows is moved. And that's where the future is, where like Google Sheets, Excel is expected to move to the cloud. It will never happen 100%. At most, it might be five to 10% because most of the work will still need to be on premise. It can't be on the cloud for a variety of reasons. But uh, but yeah, I mean, that's the answer. So Mac will always be a cut down version of what you get on Windows. Even though today it's much better than how it was, you know, seven, 10 years back. All right, so this is dynamic arrays. I have already mentioned the keyword to you. Now you can Google it and see what it is, right? I have an entire course on dynamic arrays. It's a beautiful topic. Let me give you one more example now. Let's say we have a stock, which is Tata Motors. And I want to find the stock history for the last, I don't know, 30 days, right? So I'm just writing 30 here. And what we will do is we will write stock history. We will select the stock. But before selecting Tata Motors as a stock, I have to make sure to click on data and convert it into a stocks data type, right? Data and then stocks. Now you notice that Excel is smart enough to detect that Tata Motors is available on NYSE, BSC, and NSC. So let's select BSC. And once it becomes a stock symbol, you can see that I can see all the details like this. Right. And if I click on this logo, I can also see information about the firm, right? But how do I see the stock history for the last 30 days? I just simply say stock history. What is my stock? Tata Motors. What is the starting date? And then the end date, right? So my starting date will be today minus day one. My end date will be today. My interval will be daily. I want to see the header. I want to see the date. I want to see the open value. I want to see the high value, the low value, and the close, right? That's it. This is also a dynamic array formula. So with one single formula, it runs an API call, and it is able to give you the data for the last 30 days. Right? How cool is that? Obviously, the records are lesser because weekends are not included. But if I say 5, it shows me 4. If I say 7, it shows me like this. Any questions on this? Anyone? I'll just wait for 30 seconds in case anybody has any questions. Uh, see, you can't really have live prices because if you had live prices, then why do I even need a Bloomberg terminal, right? There will always be differences and we are using Refinitive right now. So they will be, um, it's not actually live live, but there are other things you can do. So I can even run API calls within Excel now. Um, I'm not sure how to explain that, but let's say that you go to money control. Even though this is a topic from Power Query, I'll show it to 
to you how it works right i go to money control and i want to get the stock data for some company let's say tata motors gem uh this is also m365 correct okay so let's say we have tata motors and i'm sorry i'm not really a finance guy so i'm not really sure how do i see the uh like the 15 day stock or something wait it doesn't matter let's pick this right now what we can do here is that um i can copy the url come back to excel and then go to data and then say from the web right and then when we go to the web we can just paste the url here it establishes the connection between my excel file and the website and it shows me that these are all the tables available so you can see that i can see the i obviously have to search for the correct table let's just pick one right let's say that we are looking at okay let's say maybe we are looking at this right a comparative um between three different companies so i know this is the table 25 i can also go to the web view if i want to see that and then basically we can transform the data and then we can set an auto refresh which means that every minute or every second the data will get refreshed so we can do stuff like this but you also have proper apis here so there's a company called alpha vantage alpha vantage okay. so alpha vantage has some free apis available and excel can now run apis right so you can make api calls using excel i don't really get into details because uh, i mean if, if if you're interested you can go and have a look at this but it should be fairly simple just uh, save the link for you just give me a moment all right great uh, so i've shown you stock history as well the next thing i want to show you is let me think okay let's look at how visual basic works right now vba has been around for many many years so visual basic is based on the language called basic which i'm sure all of you have heard of basic is almost like a history lesson right i mean one of the earliest languages and basic was a command line language after which when they made it visual they had a gui they had a graphical interface they called it visual basic because it was visual when you look at it then it, then there was dotnet that came and now visual basic is it's not outdated but i mean it's not like the most current language so if you search for vba in 2008 vba was declared as a legacy language but if you want to work on coding if you want to do coding on excel this is your go to platform even though the future will be typescript and javascript which i'll show you today as it stands right now all the big fours all the consulting firms all the investment banking firms they cannot survive without vba it's just impossible i mean so much of their work happens on vba and it is not possible to port that to a different system like a lot of people might say but is uh, python not better or is r not better perhaps but there are two reasons why it doesn't make sense one you can't shift your work overnight you know people have been working on vba for 20 years and all that accumulation of codes and ready made solutions it's very difficult to port it over to a different language number one number two vba is inbuilt in excel so it's, it has a seamless connectivity right when you're using r or python even though they can interface with excel there is that extra layer you know which becomes a problem even though there are firms like excel wings there are firms like excel wings which are allow you allowing you to run python directly with, inside excel without using a library like this right so within the excel interface you can work on it but then it's it's not really adopted very well and even if people adopt it there will be a learning curve and everybody is not going to have the capability the regular normal organization does not have the capability of telling us people that now you have to learn python if you want to work on excel right 
Uh, even at the big fours and IB firms, it doesn't happen like that. Anyway, the reason I'm giving you this background history is to tell you that people might tell you otherwise, but coming from me, I was a 40 under 40 in analytics for my work done in Excel VBA, right? So let me assure you that I was on the same list with people who were running AI firms and machine learning setups. And uh, on my 40 under 40 listing, there was a guy who was the ex Alexa head for Amazon. And he's running his, I don't know, some AI deep learning company right now. The mere fact that I was on that list, being an Excel developer should give you enough confidence of how important it is and how important it will continue to be going forward, right? Now let me show you in action how it works. Right? I want to give you a very simple example. Let us say that we have um, just give me a moment. Okay. Let's say that we have some numbers written here. So this is my sales value. And I have some numbers here. It doesn't really matter what the numbers are. There's some numbers that have been given. Right? Now, how do you convert the number into words? Quite tricky, right? Because if you speak to any one of your seniors, and I'm sure some of your work ex, you all know that we can't do this, right? You can't really convert numbers into words. You have to end up doing it manually. Now, you don't need to do this very often, but the one time in three months that you have to do it, and you have to do it with a hundred cells. It's so irritating because you have to do it manually. It takes a lot of time. It's repetitive. There are a lot of mistakes that can happen. So what I've done here is I have created my own function. For example, when I write equal to sum, this is a function that is there in Excel. And like this, there are about 700 functions in Excel, right? Cataloged in different categories. But what if I want to create my own function? So I can create something called a UDF, which is a user defined function. So I've created a function called convert to INR, right? Everybody convert to INR. And obviously this is my function. So I've given it my name, HMC text, convert to INR, see what it does. It takes the input and I press enter and that's it. It converts it into words. 99.99% of people that you speak to so one in 10,000 people might know that, oh, I think this is possible somewhere. I can use a code to do this, but the other 9,999 people are going to tell you, no, this is not possible. You have never seen it. And it just isn't possible because how can I convert numbers into this? But as you can see, I can do that by creating my own user defined function. Let me give you one more example. Let's say that we have to do Let's say that you have some uh, names that have been given, and this is B, B, A, A, C, C, something like this, right? And if I ask you to count how many unique names are there, that is A, B, C, and D, so there are four of them, you will have to first take the data, you will have to remove the duplicates, and then you will have to do a count. But I have created a function called count unique, and what it does is, Without having to do any intermediary steps, you're able to find. Okay, I'm sorry, I think this has to be um, a strange. Just hold on. Hmm. Okay, I don't know. Maybe there's some bug with this because I haven't tested it for a while. If we try to show you something different, let's say weekends, right? So there is a project and the start date and the end date. The starting date is the 1st of January, 2021. And the end date is, this is 31st of July, 2021. Now, as a, you know, as a business, you know that there is a project assigned and you would like to know how many weekends are there in that period. I'm assuming here that Saturday and Sunday, both are weekends, correct? Now, is this possible by writing a formula? Yeah, I did that, but I think even with the numbers, it wasn't working. Must be some error in my testing. But anyway, the point is that if I want to find out how many weekends are there in my date range from 1st till the 31st, it's so difficult because first I have to do end minus start plus one. Then I have to do minus, then I have to do, okay, now find me the network days international, start date, comma, end date, comma, 
Saturday, Sunday. And what does it tell me? This formula tells me that there are 61 weekends. Okay. If all of you can see the formula, this is the formula, right? N minus start date plus one minus network days international start end date, removing Saturday and Sunday. What have I done? This is my improved formula. I simply need to write equal to weekends and I can say start, comma, end, and it gives me the answer. Now, see, I'm not reinventing the wheel. I'm not doing something that Excel cannot do. It is always possible for people to write this formula, but it means it takes more time. It means that every time a new joining happens, you have to teach that person. You have to train that person how to use the formula. And there is a possibility that you make an error. Somebody might forget to put this plus one. Somebody might put a one instead of the two or something like that. In my case, this is a foolproof solution because the only thing I need to teach the person is that start it, comma, end it. That's it, nothing else, right? Sure. So let me show you how these UDFs are. Uh, which is mute everyone. Okay. Um, this is the backend environment, right? So this is how Visual Basic looks. How do you do this? When you're working on Excel, if you right click on any sheet and you say, yeah. you would, yeah. Hi, hey. this yeah. is somebody who's not muted. I'm trying my best to make sure there's no distraction. All right, I'll answer everybody's question. So if you right click on a sheet and you say that I want to view the code, this can be done on any version of Excel, 7, 10, 30, 16, 19, or any older version of Excel, but this will not work online. VBA does not work online, right? In fact, this point is so important that I want to write it down that VBA is not outdated, right? Very important in big four consulting, right? And obviously, especially finance, right? And um, all versions available on all versions, but not online. Okay, just keep that in mind. Great. So when we come to the VBA window, I will show you the codes that I've written. Just give me a moment. So modules and functions. Um, this is the one which is convert to INR, right? See again, I mean, if you are a coder, you know that the length of a code has very little to say about the complexity. You know, the code can be running into 5,000 lines of code, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a complex code, right? It can be a 10 line code, which can be quite complicated because of the library or the method that we're using, right? But it is possible that it is a long code, but it is not very complex. For those of you who do not come from a coding background, please take this takeaway with all of you, for all of you to make sure that the length of a code should never be looked at as a correlation with the complexity of the code. Like, um, this, uh, which one did I show you? The weekends one. Let me show you that. So this is the weekends one. You notice it's very small. And even by looking at it, it should make sense. What are we doing? We are saying that the number of working days are network days start, comma, end. And then my calendar days are end date minus start plus one. And then I'm doing weekends. So basically what we were doing in Excel by writing one complex formula, I have reduced the complexity for the user because for the end user, they don't need to care about what I need to write. They only need to write calendar days. They only need to write start, comma, end. All the other working will happen behind the scene. Right? All right. Um, so is the UDF limited to one workbook? No, no. Like my UDF is not restricted to my current workbook. It can work on multiple workbooks, right? Okay, let me show you something else. Um, VBA is also capable of modifying Excel in a way that you can't do it otherwise. For example, if I hide the grid line in the view tab, if you hide the grid line, you notice that I hide the grid line. I can hide the headings, which is A, B, C, D, 1, 2, 3, 4. And I can hide the formula bar. But what if you need to hide the sheets, the name of the sheets? What if you need to hide the application bar? What if you need to hide the scroll bar? All of that is not possible, right? So what I have done is I have created my own, what we call a user form, right? So I've created my own user form called appearance. 
and how does it work if i do not want to see this ribbon at the top i can say minimize ribbon if i want to hide the status bar i can hide the status bar the sheet tab the scroll bar the grid line and the heading and the formula bar and minimize the ribbon do you see how cool this is this is almost like working on powerpoint right like it's an absolute decluttered environment and obviously there's a lot of code behind it but it's very simple it's just one one lines of code right which are um, modifying all these elements on my interface that you can see right let me try to show you one more example so we have appearance let me remove that um okay and let me select um version control right this is a more advanced project that i worked on and what we did here was that because excel does not have version control so if you say multiple copies how do you keep a track of the multiple versions that you are saving correct so what i did here was i created a user form that allows me to back up and restore multiple versions of my files like this right if you are interested to use it yourself you can go to github uh, i'm sure all of you know what github is so github is a like a coders repository so this is our portfolio for all programmers and developers github is your portfolio basically right and if you're working on complex projects where there are multiple members working on a single project in github you can have a repo which is a repository that you can pull different folks from it i'm not getting into details you can do it on your own but i just want to show you my um repository so you can see that i have all these codes that have been given here so version control appearance prefix suffix and change this all the documentation is available so if you click on it you can see i have explained the entire documentation behind it how it works why is it necessary right and i'm also giving you the files so you can download it how to install it on your computer you can see that all the steps have been given so what does it do what is the benefit how to install right let me share this with you as well you can find all of this on my website as well but i'll share the link in any case right okay now um we can also record our actions so if i click on developer we have something called record macro what that means is that any action that i perform will get recorded so that i can repeat it over and over again let's take an example so let me first write it here so you can also record actions and can create UDF and UF, which is user forms. All right, watch carefully. So what I'm doing is I'm writing um, region sales. So we have north, south, west, and east. One, two, three, and four. Now imagine that I have to do a task multiple times, right? Which means that I have the data given numerous times, like this. and the problem is that the numbers obviously can be different so i'm just changing the numbers here and i'm asking you to put a formula now you will say what's the big deal i can just come and write sum and then i can copy this and paste it like this but see what happens is that if you are in a big firm if you are in auditing taxation even consulting sometimes you might have to do this with 50 columns so does it make sense to really copy the formula 50 times and i'm giving you a very simple example the problem can be more complex than that this is a classic case of where you want to run a macro what is a macro a macro everybody is just a rule or a pattern that will convert an input into an output that's it but what's the big deal about it a macro is something that you have defined for repetitive tasks right so any macro that you have it can convert the input into the output the same way multiple times right let's see how we do this so i will click on this button called record macro right but before i do that let me make sure that i have clicked on sales or i click and click on the last cell any one that i want so i click on sales i will select record macro and what will i do when i click on okay i will say that equal to sum 
equal to sum of these four numbers. All good? Let's also make it bold. And let me stop the recording now. Now I can make a shape. So let me add a shape. And I can right click and assign the macro so that let's see if it works or not. So now whenever I want to run the macro, I just have to click on this and you get the result. Very cool. So I have predefined what I want to happen. Let's see if it works. Click, click and click. How cool is that? Now, obviously you can make it, you can add a further layer to it to tell it that go to every, skip every two columns and add a formula in that column. Let me give you another example before you ask your questions of a macro. How many sheets do I have right now? I have sheet one in which I showed you dynamic arrays. I have sheet two in which I showed you stock history. And I have sheet number three in which I showed you the macro. And I have sheet number four, which has my UDF, right? Now, if I ask you to create a table of content, that means a sheet which has all the four sheet names written in it. Dynamic array, stock history, macro, and UDF. You will have to do that manually, right? You will have to go one by one, copy the name, paste it, and then put a hyperlink. So I have already created a macro for it. And what I can do is I can click on Habishim Consulting. As you can see, I have several macros that I've created like this. Right? And I will say table of content. And what it does is in one click, Voila, it creates a table of content for me. So without having to move an inch, without having to do anything manually, I have managed to create a new sheet with a table of content in it that has a list of all the four sheet names along with the um, uh, hyperlink as well. Right? You can ask your questions now. Obviously, if you're interested, you can go to my channel and there I've explained these topics in much more detail. I have uh, many hours of content available on Visual Basic. Anyone, any anything on your mind? See, don't ask me if it is important or not. If it wasn't important, I wouldn't cover it, right? But yes, if you're in finance, learning VBA is a must, right? Because even if a job description does not explicitly say that you need to have a VBA knowledge, you still need to know VBA. And coming from me, you have to take, take my word as absolute gospel, right? Because I have taken over 250 trainings at the big fours. So I know exactly what they do, what they need, what helps differentiate you from another person. And you can earn a lot of brownie points if you know how to work on VBA. How to start learning Excel for beginners. Um, yeah, so I'm not really sure if um, there is a perfect answer that I have for you, right? A lot of students obviously ask me this question and what I tell them, is that there is a path that I recommend, okay? Now, obviously, depending on your current knowledge level, whether you want to be a product manager or an analyst or an HR business partner, the path will differ for you, right? But if you go to my website and you go to Excel courses, I have given a path here like this. Again, this is just a thumb rule that I'm giving, saying that you're a B-School student and for most of you, you can follow this path, but then you can always reshuffle it as you wish. I recommend that you start with Excel Bible that is mastering the basics. Do not skip the basics. If you skip the basic, which is formula, dollar signs, color, formatting, over a period of time, you will not be able to learn the advanced things because whenever you pick up an advanced topic, some foundational knowledge might not be there and you might end up not learning it properly, right? Please start with the basics. Learn data cleaning. 80% of the task of any data analyst in the world is data cleaning. It's not me telling you. If you speak to anybody who works in data analytics or in data science, they will tell you the same thing. Then you should um, learn charts, date functions, pivot table, VLOOKUP, a little bit of basic statistics. Then you go to customer analytics, dynamic arrays. You know, you see how far ahead dynamic arrays is. So you have to do, even though that was the first example I gave you, you should actually start with the basics and then come to it, right? After that, you it depends on what you need, like VBA, financial formulas, Python with Excel, data wrangling using Power Query, DAX, and then finally, JavaScript and TypeScript. That would be the most complex topic for most of you. And also that would be the one that is not needed right now 
it is more about preparing you preparing yourself for the next you know next 3 years 5 years if you want to learn excel so well that you want to make sure that you don't become obsolete in another 2 years then this is the path that i recommend you should follow how much do these courses cost um I, I see i don't want to do a plug in for the course right now but since you asked me the entire excel bundle is for 999 uh, which is 40 hours of content right it is 35 40 35 to 40 hours of content and there are 18 courses in it 16 on excel and two courses on google sheets as well right right okay um okay let's switch topics and let's do something different now i want to show you how power query works right okay let's um, look at a problem statement you get your internship and day one your manager is giving you a task where he or she says that i'm giving you a folder okay listen very carefully the manager comes to you and tells you that i'm giving you a folder that has three files in it 13 14 15 so the last 3 years of sales data and you have to create a pivot table you have to analyze it what is the first task that you have to do before charts and calculations and analysis and all of that what is the first thing that you have to do yeah so exactly so i was looking at the correct term so medha collate consolidate combine so you see that there are different terms that are coming up right now the correct way would be to say that i want to combine the data sure i want to import the data i want to import and combine the data as in append so uh, supratip it would not be a merge merge means that you are adding more columns append means that you are adding more records make sense so merge will be adding additional columns but we are adding additional records which are rows so that would be an append that is what we call it right if anybody of you have studied sql you know what i'm talking about so we have um, append versus merge right this is not an excel topic it's just a fundamental of database management so if i may give you an example um look at this what does merge mean merge means that i have three records or rows in the first table i have three records or rows in the second table but the columns are different a b c d e so i'm using column c as a mapping column what you call a key and you're able to get all the five in one place what would an append be an append basically means that we are doing oh uh, one second sometimes finding the right image is difficult okay this is what an append is right it means that you have the same set of columns in all the three tables so i have item and three months of data and i want to combine everything into a single data set like this fair enough okay now let's see how we do this so let me come back to my folder and i will copy the folder path everyone just control c come back on excel i'll create a new sheet and we want to use something called data and this entire group which is called get and transform data right this is called power query if all of you can see this where i'm uh, hovering my mouse this is called power query so remember power query is using a language called m i'll explain this in more detail later so what we want to do here is i want to go to data and power query allows me to connect to different types of data that means that if i have let me show you the website quickly so power query is a data preparation tool that allows you to extract transform and load data it's an etl tool similar to sql and power query the beauty of power query is that it can connect to hundreds of data sources everything from excel to csv to json to web to apis you can even create your own software development kits i mean there's an sdk available so you can utilize that to create your own connectors there are more than 300 transformations available and you don't need any coding right where does it work power query works on power bi which is a data visualization and a 
business intelligence too. It works on Excel, obviously. It works on CDS. CDS is a data repo for Microsoft. Now they have renamed it to Dataverse, right? Then they have Power Automate, which is an RPA platform. And you also have SSAS, which is SQL Server Analysis Services, right? Okay. So I go to get data and you can see that Power Query enables me to connect to many different types of data sets. So I can connect to Excel, text, CSV, XML, JSON, PDF. I can connect to different types of databases. How cool is that? I can connect to SAP HANA directly from within Excel. I can connect to, let's say, Oracle or SQL or Postgres directly from within Excel. I can obviously connect to Azure, which is Microsoft Cloud. I can connect to other online services, Salesforce, Dynamics, SharePoint. And I can even connect to other types of connectors. I can even connect to Google Big Data. It's fantastic, right? Like so far we have been taught that Excel is riddled with limitations. You only have 1 million rows in one sheet. It's all false. It's just people who don't know what the power of Power Query is. And Power Query has been around for 11 years, right? It's not a new technology or a new platform. Of course, it has become more powerful with time. In 2010, 2011, it was very bare bones. It just had a few features in it. And over the years, they made it more and more powerful. But as it stands right now, this is an indispensable part of your Excel learning. Whether you learn it in college as part of your curriculum or workshops or not, it doesn't matter. You have to make sure that you learn it either through self-learning, online course, peer support, whatever it is, right? Okay. So let me go to uh, from file. And there's a beautiful feature called folder, which is what we have done, right? We have copied the folder path. So I'll click on folder. I will paste the path here, everyone. And as you can see, I'm just selecting that folder, which is this case is called old. And I click on open. What happens is the first thing it does is it tells me that Havish, this is a confirmation. You have three files in that folder, right? So I click on combine and transform because that's what we want to do, right? We want to combine the three files and we want to transform it using an append. So I click on combine and transform. And now it confirms with me, which is the sheet that we want. So we want the sheet called sheet one and we click on okay. And as you can see, a new interface opens up. And in this interface, we are working on Power Query. Remember, we are still working on top of Excel, but the interface is different. This is Power Query. And Power Query is not tied only to Excel. As I told you, it works on the cloud. It works on Power BI. It works on SQL Server as well. Right? If I may show you one more thing. Uh, do you see this? In my task manager, when I have Excel, do you see there's something called Microsoft Mashup Container? I'll not get into details here, but you have to understand that when you're working on Power Query, you're essentially using SQL Server in the background as well. Right? Okay, but how do we know whether we have the correct answer or not? If I click on the first column, do you see this? 13, 14, and 15. How cool is that? No manual work required. In principle, even if you have five folders and each folder has 15 files in it, and you have 125 files, who is going to combine all of it manually? This is how you do it. Trust me, today, right now, if you speak to people in the corporate with five to 15 years of experience across different organizations, nine out of 10 will ask you, what is Power Query? We have never heard of it. You know, so there's a lot of knowledge gap. I'm not talking about a technical gap where they don't know how to work with it. There's a knowledge gap or rather an awareness gap where they don't even know that Power Query exists. Now, you might come to me and say, Havish, how is it possible that such a beautiful feature is not being used by organizations? We started teaching PwC Power Query in the month of March this year. Can you believe that? I have been using Power Query since 2017. It took PwC four years to come to a point where they said that we are comfortable with our team working on Power Query. There are many factors and reasons for it. See, organizations are very lethargic. Organizations are very slow to mature and change because they already have an established process. So the moment you tell them that I'm going to teach you something better and something new, they can't just immediately change overnight because what will happen to all their legacy data, all the formulas and all the files that they've already created. It's very easy for us to say that, but this is better. 
but then the transition period is very difficult right if any of you come from an it background you know that the challenge of deploying sap in an organization is not the cost the challenge is that how do you port it over from a existing system to a new system right and that's why these implementations of software on paper we say that one month we are in and out in 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 actual real life you notice that it takes a year because it takes so long to people to get used to the new software and you know the new interface and these new features in this case any questions any anyway. uh power query i think radhika some part of it is available on 13 uh maybe you have to install it you have to download and install it but power query should be available on 16 and above so 2016 and 2019 right so you don't need microsoft 365 for this you need oh by the way since all of you are asking me this question let me be very clear so that there is no ambiguity which version of excel do you need don't go here and there just go online search for microsoft 365 everyone microsoft 365 open the web page there are different options for business home enterprise and education you go to home and microsoft 365 will cost you either 489 rupees per month okay this is exclusive of taxes so it will be a little more than that or it will be 4899 per year the absolute first thing that you have to do today right after the session is over is to please go online and purchase it and install it don't try to think of excuses do not try to think of silly reasons like nobody else told us why is havish so particular i am not getting any commission okay by doing this i am only telling you this because if you don't do it now the excuse will not hold up you know after four months i am going to offer you a life project i'm just saying you know i have at any given moment i have more than 20 25 students doing their life projects with me from various iims even though i haven't worked with iim cal previously but the point is that you will do a life project and the first thing i will ask you is <laughs> do you know how dynamic arrays work or do you know how stock is true works now you can't give me a silly answer saying that but our version of excel or my laptop came bundled with a different version and our college should, this is ridiculous right if you want to invest in your learning there is no other there are no two ways about it you can't pirate it because it is on the cloud so you have to log in please make sure to go and install it. if you want to save a little bit of money maybe six of you can uh, tie up one of you can purchase and give access to other five people in that case it will cost you much cheaper right no no like i said it will not work on any other version okay you are talking about home and student 2019 even if you have 2019 the business the enterprise version it will still not work let me once and for all okay let me make it super clear for you stock history on excel okay i hope there's no ambiguity now everyone i'm on the official microsoft page for stock history what does it say it is only available for m365 excel for m365 for mac and excel for the web that is it no other version of excel will have this feature right if you still need any more convincing i'm happy to do it right okay let's come back um so we have the data and this is beautiful because when i click on close and load and i get the appended you know because we have appended three files right now we get the appended data back in excel so we have 6600 rows i'm sure all of you can guess that if i go back to the folder and if i add another file to the folder let's say i'm adding 2016 what do i have to do right click and refresh how cool is that so we have created an entire automation process where we are saying that the process has already been established all i have to do is to write in a refresh and in one click 16 also gets added but how does it know what to do the reason that works is because if i show you the query again this is the m language everyone see this is not a programming language so i mean um, that would be a very important point for all of you you don't need to learn programming if you want to work on m but then is it like excel a little bit is it like a programming language very few similarities with the programming language this is something entirely different right it's a little bit like sql it's a little bit like excel 
it's very little bit like some programming language. But you should consider this as a very dissimilar replacement to SQL. SQL means that you have to learn SQL, right? Uh, I'm not saying it's more difficult or it's easier, but that is mostly what IT guys would do or somebody in a hardcore data profile. For most of you folks, I don't think you will end up learning SQL, even though I recommend, because I place students at a lot of companies, I strongly recommend that at least a very basic understanding of SQL is very important. I have a course on um, SQL Server, and as you notice, I've written as for absolute beginners. When I say absolute beginners, what I mean to say is that you don't even know what is SQL. You have never seen it earlier. You don't know what a primary key is. You don't even know what a database is. If that is who you are, then this is the correct course for you. If you already know it a little bit, you can skip this. You can pass this, right? And to make all of you feel a little better, I assume that most of, how many of you are there? 122. I assume that most of you are engineers. So some bit of programming, all of you would have done. I'm a commerce student with a BBA and an MBA in marketing, right? I had a major in marketing and a minor in finance. I have never studied IT in my life. I only started learning coding at the age of 27 in 2014. And of course, over the last seven years, I've worked very hard at it and I was very passionate about it, but that doesn't mean that it wasn't difficult for me. It was super difficult. And I had to train myself on different technologies one by one. So I started with BBA. I spent three to four years in Vision Basic. I learned Python in one year. I learned R in one year. This year, my target is to learn JavaScript. And I'm already on track to do that. How is SQL different from an access database? Rupam, it's not really a difference. Um, SQL is a way of querying a database. What I mean to say is that where do you store your data? On Excel, you save it on the cloud, you save it on Amazon Web Services, you save it on SAP, or you save it on Access. Access is just a data repository. But after one million rows have been saved on Access, how do you query? How do you query basically means if you have 1 million records and I ask you, can you tell me which are the top 10 customers? How do you know who the top 10 customers are? Then you need to use a structured query language to get the data from the Access database. Does it make sense? Access is just storing the data. If you want to pull data from Access, then you can use SQL. I hope that makes sense. Okay, okay. so um, we have seen what Power Query does. And remember, this is just one among 500 examples. I've shown you how to combine files from a folder, but there are many, many, many other things that Power Query can do for you, right? Just give me 30 seconds, everyone. Okay, is Microsoft 350, I'm sorry, 365 on the Mac different from Windows? You have used 365 on Windows earlier, but I've switched to Mac now. Um, let me think. See, it's almost at par. Um, just a minute. Let me see. I think Power Query, for example, was is available for the Mac, right? But it does not have all the features in it. I, I just quickly want to check that. Right, that's one difference. And I am not sure if Power Pivot will work for the Mac. Oh, it is there. Okay. See, I'm not a Mac guy. I, I have been a, I'm a Microsoft partner. So I've been invested in Microsoft for 20 years. So I don't have ready answers for all of you, but let's see. Yeah, I don't think it is available. This is very recent. So Power Pivot is not available for the Mac. There are many other things that will not work. See, let's be honest. If you are going to appear for a job or for an internship before that, which requires you to work on Excel, please, please get a Windows laptop. I'm not asking you to sell off your beautiful Mac, but please get a cheap 30, 40,000 Windows laptop because like I said, this is not going to hold up in court where you say that I do not have all the features with me, right? Yeah. Great. Um, how many of you have worked on pivot tables? I'm assuming that some of you would have worked on pivots, right? So when I create a pivot table, 
tell me quickly if i put sales and profit okay and my region right so i'm sure a lot of you have worked on pivots can somebody tell me once i make a pivot tip if you haven't worked on it you can skip the question but if you do have corporate experience and if you have worked on pivot tables just tell me a very simple answer once i make a pivot table and i want to find the profit margin can i do that yes or no can you do calculations in pivot tables how may the how, how would you do that answer shank everybody is saying yes how do you do that if you have the permission to unmute yourself please oh no no of course i mean we don't want to copy the values all what i'm saying is that can you create a calculation which becomes a part of the pivot table directly beta that's different hold on hold on that is so let me let me address that one by one so we don't want to do that we don't want to copy paste beta you're saying this one no where you're saying percentage of but this is only going to change them independently you can't really connect two different fields with each other now somebody said there is an option called calculated field this is one of the worst things you should never ever use this right i'm not sure who said that so abit uh, i'm happy that you know about it i would also request you to forget about it calculated fields are one of the worst things that you can learn in excel it should be avoided at all costs i will not get into details here you just have to take my word for it right okay let's see how we do this so let me delete this okay we come back to my original table now what is my table called after the four years of data has been combined you notice that my table is called old in the top left corner let's call it sales okay now i will make a pivot table but with a small change so when i click on insert pivot <coughs> i assume that 50 60% of you would have worked with pivots correct but there is an option called do you want to add the data to the data model and we never do that right i don't think any of our bosses and managers have ever done this but i want to do this i want to add my pivot to the data model and when i click on okay what will happen is that it creates a pivot like the way it was creating it earlier i can see my region and my sales and my profit fair enough i can see my region sales profit but by virtue of the fact that i have created a pivot table with a data model i can use something called power pivot right this option so going back to what i told you earlier we have done formulas and functions i have shown you bba we have seen a glimpse of power query and now we are also using power pivot right now power pivot like i showed you is not available for the mac it is not available online I mean, it is there in Power BI, but it is not called Power Pivot, right? It's called a model, and um, Power Pivot is uh, available, I think, for thirteen, sixteen, nineteen. But you'll have to double check that. <clears throat> but where do you find it? You will have to go to File, then go to Options, then you go to Add-ins, you go to Com Add-ins, which is C O M Add-ins, and here you notice that we have something called Power Pivot. Basically, it is a feature. which is there in excel but it is not enabled because it's a very powerful feature only meant for power users right now what can i do with power pivot this is amazing watch this i can go to measures which is a calculation and i can create a new measure look what happens i can say that there is a profit margin right and what is my profit margin right now it is equal to the sum of my profit divided by the sum of my sales amount the sum of profit divided by the sum of sales and voila you get the result let me convert this into a percentage now this calculation if you can see the field list everybody this is not a calculation happening outside the pivot or through a calculated field which has many many issues this is a full fledged calculation that can happen and it becomes a permanent part of the pivot table right and there are many many other things you can do to give you one more example
let us say you wanted to see the sales value for central in all the cells. Usually what will we do? We will say equal to B12 and we'll put a dollar sign and then drag it down. Everybody agrees with me. If I want to see one value for one region and I want to span it across four cells and I'll have to copy and paste it. But what I can do now with our pivot is I can say new measure and I can say sales for only uh, central, for example, right? And the function that I'm going to write is not an Excel formula. Please keep in mind, these functions that you see everybody, you see all this, these are not Excel formulas. Add column, add missing items, same period last year, calculate, calculate table. These are all DAX functions, okay? So what I do here is I will say equal to, and after that I will write equal to calculate, what do I want to calculate? The sum of my sales. But I want to calculate the sum of the sales with a filter applied. And what is the filter applied? I will say that my filter that is applied is that my region should be equal to central. Okay. I made a small mistake. Let me just quickly check that. Okay, I have to select my table name. So sales and region to send. Let's check the formula once. Uh, hold on. Okay, one more parenthesis. And let's check again. All good. Let's see what happens. How cool is that? It is only showing you the value for central. So despite the fact that you have three other regions, it is not showing you that value. But what if you want to see the same value coming four times? I can go back to my measure and I can click on edit measure. And I will say that. Let me only say region is equal to central. Let's remove the, the filter function. Okay. Now what it does is it shows me the same value coming four times. See, I'm just showing this to you to get the, the results do not look special. It's just that these are things that were never possible on Excel and it, it, they're still impossible to do on Excel if you don't know how DAX works, right? There's a very nice video that I have on this topic, which I would like to share with all of you. So this is, uh, just give me a minute, Power Query and Havish. Yeah, this one. It's a slightly long video, it's one hour 90 minutes, but what I have explained with this example is a combination of power query, power pivot and power uh, and pivot tables. So the idea is not to make you an expert, it is just an introduction, but at least now you would know how it works, right? This is something I would encourage all of you to watch. Great, any questions, anyone? The final two topics that are left are TypeScript and JavaScript, which I'll quickly cover for you. But if you have any questions before that. All okay. So let's quickly uh, complete this example. So let's look at TypeScript and JavaScript. Um, if you're working on Excel, either online or you're working on desktop, there is something called the script lab. Okay. This is an integrated development environment in which you can write JavaScript and TypeScript. How do you get script lab on your version of Excel? You have to go to insert, you go to add-ins, right? So add-ins is a marketplace where you get multiple add-ins available, like you have Android and iOS, and you have the script lab here. What does it do? It allows you to run your own office code snippets within different MS Office applications. There are about 500 such applications available. I also have two of them. So if you type my name, you will find a stopwatch and you will find something called a swap case. Let me show you how it works. So I click on stopwatch and what it does is it inserts a stopwatch inside my Excel file. Very cool, right? That means that you don't need to have your phone with you. You don't need to open clock on your laptop. You can directly open 
the stopwatch and embed it inside your Excel. And obviously this is dynamic, so you can run it. But what is it? What is this floating window? This is nothing but a web page. For example, if I go to the IM Calcutta web page, right? Those of you who do not have a background in HTML, CSS, what is a web page? A web page is just a HTML, CSS code with some JavaScript in it to make it dynamic, right? For example, let's say that I have um, news here, right? So if I select news, and I right click and I inspect. You can do this on any browser. If I right click and go to inspect, what does it do? It shows me the HTML code that is coming behind the web page, right? So you notice that this is my heading and it says I am Calcutta in the news and this news that you see everyone, if I change it, if I just call it Havish, you notice that the page is actually changing because the page is really not a static page. You know, it's a dynamic page. If you make any change, at the back end to the HTML, it changes here as well. Fair enough. It says view all. So if I say inspect on this, it says that this is the link, which is the href. But if I want to modify this, if I say let's edit it, and rather than writing the href as this, right, I just take my own website and I paste it here. Now you notice that when I click here, it takes me to my website. So basically we know that there are three components to any website. So we have HTML, CSS, and JS, right? See, I don't want to make this workshop about uh, web development, but you have to, you can't be an Excel user if you don't know web development, a little bit at least, right? So HTML, CSS, and JS are the three components. And then you would have heard of some frameworks like you have view, right? So view has been created by a guy called Ivan Yu, right? Then you have something called um, Fabric UI, right? So Fabric is obviously a, another framework that are there. So there are many, many different types of frameworks available. So you have something called React, right? React has been created by Facebook, right? So the idea here is that JavaScript is essential to everybody. Whoever you are, whatever company you end up working with, whatever profile, you have to learn coding. It's without question. So this is nothing but a web page. So if I inspect it, you will notice that it is showing me the code at the back end, right? Like this. We have obviously hosted our code on some, some other place, but you can see that this is the fabric code, which is the Microsoft framework that we're using right now. Okay. Now see, the reason I'm showing all this to you is not to scare you or not to impress you by telling you, see how much I know. I'm showing this to you to tell you that if you want to prepare Excel, you don't just prepare what is being done today, isn't it? You will have to prepare for what will be in the market and become commonplace when you graduate after two years. And if you want to be well versed, if you want to have a head start and be ahead of the curve, then you have to start investing some of your time in learning JavaScript as well. You don't have a choice because the future of Excel is going to be JavaScript. If I may give you an example, look at this data. It's a very nice, big data set. There are 50,000 records in it, and we have 15 columns with us. It's the data for a company that is selling multiple products in different segments around the world. Now, the question is, how do you analyze it? So far, in the 35 years that Excel has been there, we have always created sort and filter or sum if, count if, manual formulas, or at most, we created pivot tables. Is it not? But now with the power of JavaScript, I can run API calls, which means that I can interface Excel with Microsoft Cloud. That means that when I click on Analyze Data, right, this is a free feature in Microsoft 365. So when I click on Analyze Data, what it will do is, it is sending my data to Microsoft Cloud. Microsoft is using AI to analyze my data for me. And what it gives me at the end is the ability to ask a natural language question. That means without moving an inch, without even applying a single formula, I can write who are my top five customers in India in order year 2013 in consumer segment. I'm sure all of you will agree with me that if I wanted to get this result by manual sort filter, pivot table, it would have taken you a lot of time. 
for one single cut. And like this, there will be 15 requirements that the boss has. What I can do here is just ask a question, press enter. And in one second, it tells me, Dravish, your top five customers are these people. Isn't that fantastic? Like there's no need for making a pivot table now because most of what you need in a pivot table can be done like this just by asking a simple question. Okay. So that's the point. If this is a wow factor, which it is, the first time I saw it in 2019, my jaws dropped, okay? Because you would have never expected Excel to have these features. How does Excel have these features today? Because now you have JavaScript support. And if you go through the documentation, you will see that Microsoft has created an entire landing page for Excel JavaScript APIs, right? So it explains every, the only thing you have to give from your time, from your side is time and effort. Everything is available. You can see they've explained exactly in Excel, how does development work? Why would you even want to do it? What are add-ins? How does it work? What are Excel add-ins, right? So you can see all of that. Is there a possibility that this AI will give an incorrect result? Um, <laughs> see, um, any AI obviously can give you incorrect results because it depends on many factors. Is your data clean? Was the question articulated well? Was there any ambiguity in the way you were asking the question? What is the previous data on which it has been trained? Right? So there are many other factors. Like I can't just give you a binary answer saying yes or no, but I can assure you that the tool is very powerful. And Microsoft is putting in a lot of time and effort and energy into making sure that this is the future of Excel, right? Yeah, I'm not sure if that's the answer that you were looking for, but that's the best answer I can give to you right now. Okay, uh, okay let's quickly wrap up. So TypeScript is basically VBA for the internet. Okay, I'm going to write it here. TypeScript is a language created by Microsoft, but it is based on JavaScript, okay? And why learn it? This is the big question, no? Why do you need to learn it? Just because Havish is telling you, absolutely not. It is VBA for the internet because VBA cannot work on the internet. That is why you need TypeScript on the internet. I have this beautiful video. Unfortunately, I'm not sure if I posted it on YouTube. If I have, then I'll share the link with you. Just give me a moment, everyone. We are done with the session, by the way. Uh, so you can keep on asking me your questions. I'll keep on answering them one by one. Oh, I have it. Perfect. But this is only two minutes. How is that possible? Mm. Seven minutes. That's a little better. Oh, excellent. So I think in this video, if I'm not mistaken, let me check one second. No, no, this is something else. I'm sorry, I don't think I've updated that video. There's a beautiful video that I have, which is comparing VBA with TypeScript with JavaScript, and you really should watch that. I'll upload it, upload it on my YouTube channels. Great, uh, Ashish, is it the same feature like the NL in Power BI? So Power BI is a little more advanced because in Power BI, you can even tell it what type of chart you want to create. In Power BI, you can even tell it to do a arithmetic calculation. You can even train the model. Excel is very simple. Excel, you cannot train the model. In Power BI, if I want to teach it some word, so I want to say that this is what best is, this is what consistent is, you can do all that on Power BI. Excel, I, I doubt that Excel will have the same set of features that Power BI will have. Good, any other question, anyone? Whatever is on your mind. See, I can't guarantee that I have an answer for you, but I try my very best to answer that, right? For finance, like I said, Excel VBA is your bread and butter. If you're in marketing, then learning Power BI is a must, even for finance. But I think for finance, VBA comes first, more so than Power BI. If you're in marketing, HR, Power BI is imperative. I mean, it's so important, I can't even begin to tell you. And I always insist every student to learn just a little bit of Python, not a lot, just absolute basics of Python because you know you don't want to be left behind because Python will attack different aspects of your work profile. So it's always good to have that knowledge and not use it rather than not have that knowledge. At least that's the way I look at it. 
Great. Any other question, anybody? See, if you have any questions after this, I'm very approachable on LinkedIn. So feel free to, you know, get in touch with me. Uh, and of course, I hope to interact with you guys, you know, maybe before your internships or at some other point. But the point is that um, Excel is a, I mean, it's a no brainer. Like you have to learn advanced Excel. And the idea of the session was not to overwhelm you. Like I could have very easily shown you 15 different formulas in Excel and everybody would have been very happy. But then what's the point? You, you have to know about how the technology landscape is changing, right? And Bidi made changes every, every month. There are new features coming in. If I may show you one last example, Satya Nadila Lambda, okay? There is, a, there is an addition to Excel called Lambda. And if I may show you, this addition of Lambda on Excel was so important that Satya Nadella posted on Twitter and on LinkedIn from his personal handle, right? This is a couple of months back saying that Excel, which is the world's most popular programming language. Oh, by the way, if Satya Nadella says that Excel is a programming language, it is a programming language, right? So don't go back thinking that, no, no, Excel is not a programming language. It is very much a programming language. As much as Python or R is a programming language, Excel is also a programming language. As a matter of fact, it is the most used programming language in the world. 750 million people work on it, right? Okay, anyway, so Excel formulas now has something called Lambda. I don't know if any of you come from a coding background. In case you do, you notice the Lambda are reusable anonymous functions. So this means that without learning any coding, you can create your own formulas UDFs, which I showed you earlier inside Excel, and you can use it anywhere inside the Excel workbook. I not get into details here, but this is considered to be one of the biggest, most dramatic changes that has happened to Excel. I also don't have it. It's very new. It is slowly getting rolled out to more users, but trust me, dynamic arrays, which wasn't there two years back, it is making such a big impact on financial modeling or modeling of any sort. Similarly, when Lambda comes in, the entire landscape of how people work on Excel will change. Not for the basic users, but for all the advanced users, right? Anyway, the point of showing this to you is to tell you that there are a lot of changes that are happening to the Excel landscape. The idea is not to keep on reading and reading and not practicing. I just want you to be aware of what all is happening. I'm sure you will have many other things on which you have to focus your energies, but Excel has to be, I don't know, five to 10% of your time. You have to spend time working on Excel. There are no two ways about it, right? Whatever help you need, if you're stuck, if you don't know what is the right way to go about it, you can always ask me, but then one way or other, you have to make sure you learn Excel really, really well, especially from a pre-internship point of view, because in your internships, Excel will help you make that bigger impact and that enables you to get a better PPO as well. Great. Uh, that's all from my side. If you have any, it was a one and a half hour session, right? I'm sorry. I completely forgot. Somebody can confirm. Uh, uh, yes, Havish, it is one and a half hours. Right? Sure. Great. If you have any doubts, you can uh, unmute yourself and ask. We have uh, two more minutes left. I don't think they have more questions and you have answered many of them. Thank you very much, Havish, for taking your uh, valuable time and enlighten us with the knowledge and such a wonderful presentation. Like you showed us the importance of hands on, like just not uh, giving out the formula, but uh, you planted the curiosity to learn more and uh, uh, just uh, to explore more in the Excel, not sticking on to the basic formula, how advanced Excel and Power BI and every evolutionary part of Excel, like how it how it is shifting from time to time. And thank you so much uh, for uh, your presentation. I definitely think they'll visit your website and learn uh, learn uh, in detail uh, depth about all the things which they have uh, uh, heard about the names at least. And uh, thank you all the attendees uh, for participating in this webinar. We hope you enjoyed it. Excellent. Thank you for calling me, guys. All the very best. Uh, Havish, could you stay for two more minutes? Uh, sure, sure. No problem. Uh, uh, Santosh? Yeah, I think we can uh, 
Yeah, and after then, all the participants, like, I'll yeah. try to uh, remove them if possible. Yeah, I'll also. Santosh, you can start. 